what I'd like to show you are how to take tracings and the, to the industry standard. Every company will have their own way of doing these. All you have to do is follow their, their lead and they will be giving you specific directions on how to do them. First of all, you need a manila folder. You want to put the horse's name, the owner's name, and the date that it's taken. We also want to mark it left and right. That sounds simple, but it's very important. Also, we want to mark the middle of the paper because we'll be taking our measurements with this flex ruler. In the middle of the flex ruler, we also want to make a dot so that when we take our tracings, we're going to be able to line it up with that line. All right, we'll be taking four specific tracings in certain areas. The first being behind the shoulder blade. So what we want to find is the caudal aspect or the furthest part of the scapula. And again, industry standard is to measure about two and a half fingers behind that, which is right here. I'm going to just use some kids paint because it's what I have available, but typically some white chalk would work well. You could put a piece of tape, but something to mark it. Our second measurement will be the lowest part of the wither or the base of wither. So we'll also mark that area. Coming further back, we want to take a measurement at T18 or the last thoracic vertebrae at the rib. An easy way to find that is to palpate this bone, which is the tuber coxae. Slide your fingers forward. You're going to hit a resistance, and that'll be the last rib. And trust me, even on fat horses, you can usually feel this. Follow it up, and remember that it angles. If we come up too straight, you're going to think that you can use a larger saddle than you should. So if you look at an anatomy chart, you'll see that the rib comes up. So right in here is where we'll take our third measurement. When we do this, we have to make sure that that middle mark on the flex curve is going to come down over the wither and it's going to be nice and straight. We want to be on this line. The horse needs to be standing square throughout. And we also want to make sure that the flex curve is perpendicular to the ground on both sides. He sees something, so I don't want to do that just yet. I'm going to ask Joy to pull his head down a little bit. So there, so he lifts his back slightly. And then I can go ahead and pick this up. And notice I'm picking it up from the left side. I'm going to bring it over to my table that I had set up previously so I don't have to worry about cross ties and everything else. I'm going to slide this up and I'm going to put that dot right there on the middle. And I'm going to do my tracings on the inside. I want to make sure it's here. If we put it out here, that's going to make the tree a centimeter wider. So we want to go ahead like this, move your finger because we don't want this moving all around. So just make sure you support it all the way. The next one will be at the base of wither. Again, that's the lowest part of his wither. Making sure both sides are perpendicular. I'm making this look really easy because I do it all the time. Take your time with it and it may, you may have to do it a couple times to make sure it's correct. Then I'm going to put this again, match it up, try to keep it neat, do the same thing. I'm going to come over to T18, make sure it's perpendicular on both sides, get it in the correct location. Pick it up on both sides. What you will notice in the winter, these are going to be a little stiffer. In the summer, they're going to be more limp. So just be careful while you're picking it up and that you go directly to your table. If you're trying to do this and you're trying to do it on the ground or someplace that's just not conducive to it, you're going to have issues with it. Lastly, 
we want to take our tracing of his top line. And again, I will ask Joy to bring his head down a little bit. It's down pretty good. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this up, get it laying flat, pick it up the same way, come back over here, put it on my paper. And you notice I have my pen waiting so that I don't have to fiddle around finding it. Usually I'd have it up here so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. And I'm going to put my top line tracing. So what we had is tree point. That's the structure of the front of the saddle that determines the width, the base of wither, T18 or the last rib, and the top line. So as I stated earlier, this would be accepted for most companies and as an industry standard. What they will do is they'll measure this one a certain centimeter down and across to figure out the width. The base of wither, this helps to determine what we need for the length, I mean, for, I'm sorry, for the width of the channel. And this one for the length of the seat. So in looking at this, it may not mean much to you. If you can do this correctly, and apply pressure on your tracing, which I'm going to show you in a minute, so that it's not pinched in and it's just lying on the horse's outline, we get a good idea of the size and the shape of the horse so that we can give suggestions of a saddle. So while we moved uh, everything around, Solo wasn't square. We have to get him totally square before we do anything. What the, what the tracings now represent is somebody standing on a block looking up at his top line. Tree point, base of wither, T18, and top line. So what I just want to show you now is when we put the template or the, uh, I'm sorry, the flex curve on, we want to make sure that it's nice and even on both sides. The pressure is to shape it to the horse's back. We don't want to push it in too hard, and I see people do this all the time. You can see how funky the shape comes up. If we don't do it enough, then we're going to see that it's just going to loop out too much. So the pressure is to put it on, and just even pressure all the way down, and that will give you a nice tracing. And if I was to put that on the tracing uh, paper, you'd see that it would be the same size. Again, we do the same thing on this side, on the, on, uh, the base of wither. I'm going to go wider, obviously, here. You can see that loop. You can just kind of push down. Nice, even pressure. Give us our T18. And then the same thing for the top line. So as you can see, you know, it's, it's pretty simple to do. It may take some practice. As you're looking down at the horse, this is also a good time to see if we have any asymmetry in the shoulder. We can see if there's any atrophy through the back. And this gives us an idea of how the saddle might ride when the horse is going dynamic. I'll be doing a video at some point or a DVD on the dynamic phase of saddle fitting. But for now, this is something that can be helpful, particularly if you don't have a, a professional saddle fitter living nearby. At least you can send this and get an idea of a ballpark, what might be the correct thing to start with. Thank you.